<sighs> there are so many environmental levels to choose from, and they always seem analytical, repetitive, and sometimes a drag. Why can't they just take in the fun and scenery of summer levels? Hey guys, this is the Econ Rider here, and since summer has finally arrived, I want to enjoy myself as I count down my favorite summer levels in video games. Just those levels that remind me of the season, which is ironic since it's not really my favorite once I grew up. For younger people though, summer is a blessing since school's out and we always enjoy being at beaches, boardwalks, pools, eating ice cream, and just relaxing and basking in the sun. Same rules apply, only from games I've played, one per franchise, and it must count as a summer level. So none of those other games like Super Mario Sunshine, Daytona USA, Beach Volleyball, or others that completely revolve around this environment. And there is no tepid climate, sunscreen, travel plans, sunglasses, nor nudity beaches required. Let's have some fun in the sun, huh? Starting off the list, we have the Treasure Trove Cove. This is the level that has a perfect atmosphere representing summer. It's a coastal level, and it has some fun themes like a nice sand castle to enter through after having the tideful drain, a pirate ship, a peaceful lighthouse, treasure hunting, and the scary shark. They had to throw in that Jaws reference, did they? Way to spoil the mood, Rareware. It's low on the list because the fun is like short-lived if I stay there for too long. And sometimes the rewards can be difficult to find. Even dealing with the annoying nipper on his private island. Well, at least I consider this fun little setting over that dreaded anime One Piece. Now that's something for the kids to see. I'd say it's a nice small tourist spot even when I get to fly around with Kazooie. It would have taken a higher ranking, if only it wouldn't get dull after a while. Ah, the nice cavern that is Zora's domain. The perfect setting in Hyrule for the occasion. No, I'm not counting the island of Kohil and despite Link's awakening. Just the Ocarina of Time version of it. In the child era, anyway. I always see Zora's domain as a gigantic swimming pool, complete with the rapids, the massive waterfall where you can actually dive off of, as well as swimming with Zora's. It's so much fun swimming around in that place, as long as you aren't in Jabu Jabu's turf, or are bothered by the spoiled Princess Rudo. There's a lot of cool stuff there too, as you would take a break swimming and looking for rubies. There's also a diving contest in which you can collect the silver scale, or you can buy some knickknacks at the shop. Now that's only when Link is a kid. When he's an adult, however, yeah, that's different. 
Seven years later, it transforms into a frozen, slippery wasteland with a very frigid Arctic air. As Morpha inflicted a curse onto the Zoras, causing them to be trapped beneath the thick sheets of ice. As the monster draws power from Hyrule's water supply, it just took all the fun away on how Zora's domain used to be, despite the fact that you can get an essential breathable tunic. It's only nine because much like Treasure Trove Cove, it only appears in one game, and the fun is just temporary. At least it made an ideal place for all my water and ice types in my Pokemon crossovers. Still, it's a blast, and I always wish this place can be real, though. I'd really love to swim in that place for hours till my body cramps. But, like summer and childhood itself, it has to end sometime. Why no one has ever mentioned the biker mice, I'll never know. I first encountered those rad rodents ever since their debut in their own SNES game, and I'd seen the animated series much later. Anyway, it was a fun license-based racing game, especially when one of the settings happens to be over a series of islands, specifically the Mid-Sea Island. Yeah, there are other archipelagos too, but I consider Mid-Sea the most. Why? Because A, it's the most memorable, and B, it's short, simple, and perfect for beginners. Not to mention, it is the second course in the first round Rock and Ride. So, a lot of players shall encounter this as one of the most earliest, funnest, and memorable courses in the game. It doesn't always have to be challenging to stand out, and it hardly has any hazards. Not even a lot of those lethal dark-type pools that can instantly destroy your racer. Kind of like those in Mario Kart. I think the game itself was an inspiration of that. Still, while it is short and sweet, not to mention it's only two in one game excepting the 2006 version, I'll consider it as a nice summer level overall. While on the subject of Mario Kart, here comes its own summer level, Koopa Beach. It is such a paradise racing across it, no matter what version it is. Its style, mood, atmosphere, and the music and race themselves make it a perfect setting for a summer level. There's nothing else like it, and I can always see it as a home for Koopa Troopa itself, one of my mains. Since its debut in the original Mario Kart, it has always been a short, simple, and fun course, although the cheap cheap shall ruin the experience. From the Star Cup to the Special Cup, where it's more challenging, it's still a decent circuit. As it is in Mario Kart 64, despite the crabs and the tricky shortcut, or even in Super Circuit. Much like in Biker Mice, the shallow water tends to slow the racer down a bit, but the dark water should always be avoided, as it's de detrimental to your time, it can really screech you to a halt. It's even more irritating in the 2D games mostly. Not to mention the lack of two that saves you makes you sacrifice two coins, leaving you vulnerable for damage and spinning. The reason it's only number 7 is I've only played three games. The races themselves always go by fast, much like the season itself. 
which means players aren't immersed in it for long. Still, like the bottom two entries, I sometimes wish those places existed, and it's a nice decent track for kids as well. Very user-friendly aside from the second Koopa Beach in the original, and it's just beautiful to race through. Very nice touch for a decent summer level, no matter what the installment. Yes, another racing course that symbolizes fun atmosphere and a decent summer level. The beginning level of Sherbert Island in Diddy Kong Racing. Not to be confused with that same name in Rayman 2. It's got everything a summer level should provide. Beautiful, lush environments, a good place to sit back and let loose as you cruise through the sea and sand, nice little sights of friendly whales, Majestic waterfalls, and above all, just an outstanding setting. This is like the perfect example convincing Chief Powhatan wrong that the water may be calm, but caught unawares, it could be full of activity and acceleration. And that's what this level is all about. In fact, I consider this as my favorite level of Sherbert Island, and one of the best in the whole game. I mean, it has it all on what a summer level has to offer. Too bad the party's short since it's on one game, not counting the lousy remake. And it's a basic and short as Koopa Beach. Feels kind of bad polluting it with what oil spills from balloons. But still, it's an excellent level to immerse yourself in, and it's been one of the easiest straightforward levels where the AI isn't too aggressive, not even the Silver Coin Challenge. There's some friendly whales where you can ride and come out of a cool pirate ship. And it's only built for the hovercraft, making it even more immersive. Sure, it may be basic, but Whale Bay shows on what a summer level is truly made for. No summer level list can ever be complete without mentioning the signature Final Fantasy X beach level, the Sade. The Sade is the most awesome place to be in the game. And I'm only counting the original as I was never into its sequel, X2. Anyway, after Titus was swept away by Sin, he has literally come across paradise. Like his home away from home. It's a pleasant beach located at the southernmost portion of Spira, and it's the new home to Yuna and her guardians Lulu and Kamari. Not to mention Waka, who's a native. Despite being the home of the losers, the Besaid Aurochs, before Titus made things right, and having no Machina, which was forbade by Yevon. Regardless of his fraudulent religion, the sage truly symbolizes summer with tons of stuff to do in various unique environments. For instance, the scenery is gorgeous no matter where you go, whether at the beach, seaport, village, and is surrounded by breathtaking waterfalls and forests. It's a perfect place for treasure hunting, whether you want to relax on the beach or in the town, or next to the secret waterfall accessed by airship. It's a great place to explore, and it almost functions as a resort complete with the small settlement and the various environments. Whether you want to go to the peaceful Shady Valley as long as it's not interrupted by monstrous fish, or soaking in the sun at the entryway, 
were talking amongst the townsfolk, were even investigating the first temple and cloister of trials, and collecting Yuna's first Aeon Bellifor, even when fighting its own dark side. This clearly shows what summer means to everyone, and much like any vacation spot, it's pretty hard to leave. I feel sorry for those living there, as it could be prone to severe storms, or worse, sins wrath. Not to mention it's not so well advanced. The aesthetics, activity, and atmosphere truly breed summer, and it clearly shows how the PS2 can go beyond its limits. This is one of the best levels that truly defines the season. An amazing contender for the top five. Okay, I know there are two Mario levels on the list, but I'd only consider them since Mario Kart happens to be a spin-off. Now we can mention one from the usual platformers. Once you use the Sling Star to get off the spiky coral planet, then you're immersed into one of the most pleasant places in the universe, the Starshine Beach Galaxy. Of course, this is an obvious ripoff from Super Mario Sunshine, but I honestly find this to be a hell of a lot better than its predecessor. No joke! While it happens to be smaller than any of the levels, even its main hub world, I still consider it as one of my favorite summer levels. It is a very nice place to immerse yourself in, whether it be on foot or best of all, when you're on Yoshi. Heck, unlike its predecessor, Yoshi can't actually swim in the deep waters, rather than drowning in it. In addition, it's incredible how he can actually dodge across water after eating a red-hot chili pepper. Even when he uses the balloon to lift up to the lighthouse and take in the awesome scenery, like in Treasure Trove. Not to mention the inhabitants, the Piantas, are a lot more tolerable as they're not portrayed as brainless blobs, and it's kind of fun being tossed around by their outrageous strength, as well as using the lily pad wraps and exploring under the sea. Too bad there are some killjoys like the ignoring Lakitu, the Spinies, and that slippery tricky platform that works like a large pool toy. But still, it's a pleasure to be there, as the environment and the atmosphere make it very welcoming. And much like the Sade, there are tons of exploration and treasure, such as power stars, green stars, star bits, and those silvery stars inspired by those collectibles in Super Mario 64 DS. I was gonna pick the slimy spring galaxy, but it doesn't really have much of a summery feel. Aside from the starting area and the breathtaking quiet outlook area. Ah. I always loved going around this place, and I still find it as a little more superior than Sunshine, thus taking the fourth spot. We can't forget the awesome Sonic Adventure stage, can we? Emerald Coast is a sheer blast, and it captures the atmosphere and stimuli of summer. Whether it be racing across the sand, the docks and lighthouse, and being chased by a whale, or bouncing from place to place with springs and loop-de-loops making you go fast as if you're flying. Or just relaxing if you want to go fishing. Sorry for that kill of momentum. Anyway, Emerald Coast is an epic first level, 
especially since it's close to Station Square. Not to mention saving Tails after his tornado shut down while going haywire using a Chaos Emerald. Fun fact! This level alone was actually inspired by a real-life location in Destin, Florida, even with the hotels outlining next to the coastline. Emerald Coast is an amazing summer level. Even Blockport thinks as such since it was labeled number one there. I mean, how can it go wrong, even as a lunch title for the Sega Dreamcast? Or a later release for the GameCube after Sonic Adventure 2 Battle? It just can't be beat, especially with the Blue Azure theme being similar to Spring Stadium Zone's theme from Sonic 3D Blast on the Genesis. Alas, only Sonic, Big, and Gamma can approach this level, though. Otherwise, I'd be flying like crazy using Tails. Still, it's an awesome level, and every element of it fits with Summer fairly well. I'd say despite Sonic Generations, it's the best summer level in the entire series that SEGA has concocted so far. ignore Cape Claw. It's about time Star Fox has its own summer and beach level, and it's in Soria of all places. It can't get any better since it's part of my all-time favorite installment in the franchise. The moment you hear the ocean waves as you trudge through the strenuous, confusing maze after Lightfoot Village, as soon as you pay off 60 scarabs at the toll, then you're immersed to the most scenic level in the entire Lilat system. It combines everything that resembles summer, such as a beautiful sandy beach, astonishing scenery even when the sun sets, docks that are greeted by friendly high tops, treasure hunting and finding secrets, as well as meeting the Cloud Runner Queen, while also reuniting two spellstones in the tricky Ocean Force Point Temple. Too bad this place was rolled over by a couple sharp claws and meeting an annoying light foot that'll later accuse Fox as a thief. Besides, you'd be at their mercy as soon as you complete your first expedition here. And... This happens to be Fanfiction Dreamer's favorite place, even for Misty and the Ultimate Story. Yeah, quite the disappointment. Despite these mishaps, though, it's still a fun place to roam around and immerse in. I'd say it's just as majestic and enjoyable as any of the previously mentioned entries. If not better, including Emerald Coast and Starshine Beach. Aquas can't even hold a candle to this. Alright, we're arriving at number one, but first... Let's bring out some honorable mention. summer level has either one or two factors that make it stand out on this list, whether it be scenery and aesthetics, and or fun activities. And they're just as enjoyable whether it be in land or in water. Each one is unique, and at times difficult to leave. 
like any vacation spot. This one in particular has been timeless, and it combines every aspect quite nicely. My utmost favorite level that represents summer the most is... Into first place, we have the second most recognizable location in the F Zero franchise. Big Blue, baby! It's a location where 99% of the surface is covered by water, and its circuits are built over and through its vast ocean. In most F Zero games, Big Blue often has the appearance of a wide open sea, but in F Zero GX, it became more industrial, complete with hotels, resorts, and even submerged tunnels within its tracks. Unlike most of the entries, it's not limited to just one or two games. It's an entire series! Except in maximum velocity. While the races may be short-lived, it doesn't necessarily feel that way, and they appeared so many times in a lot of games. Even those outside the series in Smash Bros. Melee. Even before Ultimate and Mario Kart 8, they aren't too shabby. Whether riding the high octane machines, or running along the track while your heart races to avoid them. In fact, these special courses have inspired me so much that I even made my own original circuit, the Dolphin Dive, featured in my epic ending it all. And my good friend, the Revived Racer, aka Customar, has brought it to life. Best part is, there are literally no killjoys anywhere in these courses. Not even when you're encouraged to take a tricky shortcut, or avoiding obstacles, or making a slippery navigation in the climax courses. I don't care! I always look forward to racing in this awesome venue. Ever since its debut in the original at the Night League, next to Mute City, it is the most iconic venue in the entire franchise, and it's easy to see why. Combining breathtaking aesthetics, even in 16-bit, with exhilarating action while racing, and listening to its renowned theme song, it just can't get any better than this. This truly defines summer hands down and makes an incredible tour spot while playing it. No matter what the installment, no matter how often it's seen, and even in the anime, it never gets tiring. Even with some challenging circuits like Ordeal, or the worst course, Big Billow, even they aren't terrible to me. Much like Port Town, I consider Big Blue as the best level in F-Zero, and as the greatest summer level in gaming history. I'm the Ekron Rider, and I hope that in the distant future we get to see it in a new F-Zero game, rather than just a lame ride in some Nintendo park. And maybe in the 26th century or no, I really hope we get to have a real racetrack and tourist attraction much like this one. Have a great summer, everybody!